Oh, Squadron Leader John Wilkie. Yeah. Thank you for coming to Waterloo Warbirds. Uh, most welcome. All right. Well, let's uh, let's take a break. You, you flew this aircraft before, right? Indeed. All yeah, right. Well, let's I, do uh, let's do a walk around. Let's see if uh, it brings back some memories here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, when did you fly the T thirty three? Well, I I started training on it in fifty uh, seven. Fifty seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And was it your first jet? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, at the time, the pro progression was Chipmunk, Harvard, um, T-Bird. Was that quite the jump from the Harvard? <laughs> I was always a little scared of the Harvard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was I, a wild little airplane. Especially you know, on the ground, I've heard uh, that, yeah. Uh, but I I, uh, I just fell into the T-Bird. It, it, was, it was just lovely. Wonderful. And I had good instructors, good. really good instructors. Good. And... Uh, so I, I, once I stopped waggling my wings, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> which is the first thing you're going to find you do when yeah. you get checked out on it. That's what I've heard. It's amazing though. You, I, I was thinking about it today. You'd watch somebody who hadn't been on the T-Bird for years. They'd mm -hmm. come back to, because we used to refresh people. Uh, uh, they came out of a staff job. Mm -hmm. First takeoff, they'd be waggling their wings, but you never saw them waggle again. Yeah. After they after they were out of sight, they came back. They did their circuits and everything. They were as steady as, a, as as could be. It was just that initial lift off. You just couldn't figure out just where. Just just where kind of finding your moment. <laughs> okay, wow, fantastic. Yeah. Wow. Well, this is probably different colors than what you had in. Much. Uh, yeah. We, we just blew them silver. So okay. Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, this is kind of neat. Uh, it is, and this actually, I mean, you get some comments once in a while. This is actually historically correct for the RCAF. Oh. I believe it was 414 Squadron did this in the early 90s, and it was kind of a homage to uh, the Royal Canadian Navy uh, VU-32, which the numbers on the tail there. Mm -hmm. So okay. yeah, there is. Uh, there, we, we try and make our aircraft as historically accurate as possible. <laughs> so, well, that's neat. Yeah, but it also gets lots of attention at the air shows mm -hmm. too. Kids love it, etc. But uh, yeah, I know it's great. So yeah, it's still um, it's probably a bit different on the on the in the flight deck when we used to. It was upgraded, I think, in the late nineties. Oh yeah. And then, uh, but otherwise, it's, it's it's the same airplane that you flew. <laughs> well, when uh, yeah, when I flew it, it was uh, it, it was NDB. You, oh yeah. You, you you flew range stations or NDBs. Uh, and that's it. When I started instructing on it, we got attack. We got tacking. Okay. So that 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 certainly cleaned things up nicely. Oh wow. Uh, but, it, but that was a long that was a long time after I'd been trained on it. For sure. Here's the old uh, string. Yeah, yeah. You can't fly without this, can you? Uh, well, I liked it. Yeah, it's good. So this <laughs> is. Why don't you explain to me? Because I haven't flown this airplane yet. So this is the yaw string. I understand yeah. that. I, I think the reason it was there uh, was because they at one point in time they used this as a gunnery trainer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wish we had them on the on the sabers, but there was no place to put it on the saber because the, the there was no, none of the front of the airplane was visible. Okay. But uh, we flew the sabers pretty hard, and they were pretty bent. And mm -hmm. if your airspeed was just a little bit out when you were shooting on the flag mm -hmm. from where you had trimmed it when you when you were starting, um, you could just miss the flag because your ball's out. Oh wow! Uh, a quarter of a quarter of a ball sort of thing. So this would be like a little bit of a backup. Of that them. was really neat, I think, although I never used it as such. Mm -hmm. it, it was okay if you were doing aerobatics or so on, you could, mm -hmm. you could see if you were slipping, but uh, um, I think that's what they really had it on there for, was to, uh, so you didn't have to look inside to see whether you were slipping when you were shooting the guns. Gotcha. So, wow. Uh, we used to debate how much they were worth <laughs> <laughs> there were rumors going around that they were they were worth I don't know some stupid number like a hundred bucks or something. Of course, like anything that. with aviation is yeah. always worth more. Yeah. Bring it on. But, uh, yeah, that that, uh, that brings back memories of going places because that's where we always stowed our our Put your bags. Yeah. When we went, uh, Not much room up there, so you guys have been packing a lot. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> I found room for the odd point in front of the Good, good yeah. man. We're going away for a weekend. Good man. I like that. That's uh, one of the uh, one of the working titles for this program that we're putting on. It's uh, is uh, well the, the official title is stories from my logbook, but uh, the unofficial title is uh, two pilots in front of an airplane drinking whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> so looking for a whiskey sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh,
I thought that'd be good to bring up the uh, bigger stories. I'm, uh, I'm not sure what to talk about. Well, it's all good. It's got, uh, we can show you other aircraft if you like. We got uh, a couple of your former foes in your uh, for your F-86 days. Just looking at that oligo reminds me of a of a story. We had a when I was overseas, I, I had flown the Sabre on the squadron for a few years, and then I was transferred. They wanted to send me home, and I didn't want to go home. I said, if I'll do anything to stay here. Mm -hmm. So they sent me to the wing instrument flight, as it was called. Mm -hmm. uh, it was good for me because it got me a, an instrument check pilot rating. I was sent back to uh, Canada to get an instrument check pilot rating, and I and. I was in the flight that did all the instrument mm -hmm. checking on there because Sabre pilots, there was no way you could check them on instruments. There was a solo airplane, of course. So they had to fly under the tent here and uh, uh, we would monitor their, their actions. Um, but uh, we had one T-bird and for some reason we couldn't get the oleos to level. On yeah. And uh, of course you're steering with your brakes all the time. Mm -hmm. So if you got a high oleo, you're you're using the brakes to to, to keep you straight. Uh, they thought they had it fixed, so they said uh, take it out on the runway and give it a high speed test. Okay, that's what I was gonna do. So uh, it was pretty good on the way out to the runway, but it wasn't right. But I thought I'll take it out on the runway and and, and see what I can do with it. But by the time I got it on the runway and uh, started on the high speed, I'd been using the brakes quite a bit to steer. And I waited a little bit longer than I should on the, with the power on, mm -hmm. got up a pretty good head of steam, trying to see if aerodynamically I could, I could uh, level them and see if it would stick. Then I decided, gee, I'm going to have to stop this airplane one of these times. <laughs> it was all I could do to get had I did just just enough brake left to get me stopped at the end of the runway, but my right wing was up. Yeah. And in order to get off the runway, I had to do a 270 to oh because I just I yeah. just couldn't couldn't counter the the um, yeah, kind of the, right. the, the wing. So that was a lesson for sure. <laughs> for sure. That's fantastic. Did you ever fly with up the uh, the tank sound? No. Yeah, I talked I, to a few guys. He said it's quite the different bird without him. It looked nice and mean when it when it didn't have the tip tank. Yeah. So it looks very graceful to me and very pretty. I, I in my Air Force career, I figured I owned the T bird. Right? Yeah. I I loved flying the Saber. It, it served me well. I had it, it was a beautiful airplane. Mm -hmm. it did its job nicely. But I never felt I owned it like I felt I owned this airplane, okay. and didn't have that many hours when, in in all, with all my instructing and so on. I think maybe I had two thousand hours on it, but I just felt I could make it do anything I wanted it to do. It was going to do it for me. It was a beautiful piece of machinery. To, so you feel like in all aspects, could you like uh, some guys have said that it can be dangerous to spin, but I've talked to a couple old deeper pilots, and they said they spun it like a top. Actually, I once tumbled one inadvertently, oh. um, and it wasn't it wasn't a problem to get out of either. Everybody was scared silly of a tumble. Yeah, uh, and I was instructing um, a, a new fellow that was coming into wing instrument flight, Gro Tonkin, at, at the time. He'd just come off the Sabre, and uh, so he wanted to do a spin. I said, "Sure, go into the spin, uh, stick back, and full rudder." put the stick back and over to the right and, and right around to the left and that was just the wrong thing to do no kidding and we got it we got into a tumble it was wild no I, uh, but um, uh, I just grabbed a hold of things and pushed the stick forward and it wasn't uh, wasn't a long time before it just started flying so you just like basically 
Did you neutralize the rudder and then push the stick forward? I neutralized it first, yeah, because okay. there was at this time we didn't nothing. know what way you were. Yeah. You were so I've been reading the AOM, and the AOM sounded mm -hmm. almost says, "Let's release everything and let it come mm -hmm. out itself." Mm -hmm. And then once you get in a recognizable state, then you can. Uh, you, you can yeah, I it. might be faulted for my techniques after oh, uh, 50 years. No, no, you're forgiven. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I think that was about what I did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that's now how how high were you when this uh, when this all went down? Oh, we were fairly high. We were up 25,000. Okay. Or okay. something like that. So if you're doing spins and like crazy, uh, more uh, detail, I guess uh, aggressive uh, maneuvers like that, you probably want to be up above 20. Yeah, we, um, our rules in the Air Force, unless you were a, a um, what am I saying, a performance pilot, you know, mm -hmm. a, um, uh, doing shows. Okay. Uh, we we were restricted to ten thousand feet. Okay. And any aerobatic maneuver had, and if we were doing a spin, we had to be out by ten thousand. Okay. So it was pretty. It was pretty safe that way. Yeah, for sure. So we had a lot of space uh, to to get out out of it mm -hmm. i was I, w I have to admit i was just surprised that it came out of it so easily yeah because there was no question it was a tumble i had never had any sensation like that do you know how long you were tumbling for oh, uh, it just seemed like forever 10 or 15 seconds wow I would guess. wow uh, that's crazy yeah, yeah that would uh, that would wake you up <laughs> yeah I, I the fellow in the back seat i think was was a little bit more stunned than i was no kidding both. did he keep flying yeah okay oh, yeah. all right good yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's great. So, uh, but no, I never, I, I can't remember. No, I was never a, a, a station test pilot. Mm -hmm. Probably the station test pilot would have been the one that would get the chance to fly the Hilton Tokes. Oh, okay. I think it's Well, here, I'll give you a tour of other aircraft real quick. Mm. So, uh, you were here in the December last year? Yeah, December. it was quite a while. I thought I'd be out real quick again to come and say hello. And, and, and in fact, I still have things to bring you know, to breakfast. You were always welcome to so, you know, come and have a look at things. So, uh, I don't know, you probably saw this one. This is our L-29. Mm -hmm. uh, 1964, 65 inch. Quite a sweet looking airplane. It's a really cool airplane, and th uh, this one is modified. So the original Czech design, they actually were going to put a, a Rolls Royce engine, but the Soviets were like, "Nyet, yeah. you must have put Soviet engine in." So they put in a Russian engine, uh, and this one's been modified to go back to the originally designed uh, Rolls Royce uh, Viper engine. So it's got about thirty percent more thrust. Mm -hmm. So it's got a, quite a bit of jam in it. Uh, I haven't personally flown in it, but, uh, but it's it's pretty popular and. Uh, I mean, as far as our jets go, it's modern because it's a turbo fan versus a turbo jet. So it burns yes. less gas. Yeah. It still burns a ton of gas, but <laughs> significantly less than, uh, than, than the T-33. Yeah, it looks really sweet. It is pretty cool, yeah. And then, of course, we've got our MiG-15, which... Um, Do I dare ask how you got a hold of the MiG-15? I don't even know. <laughs> I think it came from the States. You know, it was from the States. So uh, mm -hmm. I think after the... the I'm just... I'm, I'm hypothesizing here because I don't know the full story, but after the uh, Cold War ended, a bunch of uh, American collectors went over and picked up a bunch of Soviet airplanes, including this one, uh, and it was purchased by the current owner uh, in the States, and then uh, brought it to Canada about two years ago. Or no, more than that, sorry, a couple of years ago. My recollection is that, was it the 15 that the Sabres were fighting in, in uh, Korea? Correct, or yeah. the 17, it's the 15? 15, yeah. Uh, the reason the Sabres, I'm given to believe that the, perhaps the only reason the Sabre could be because it had a lighter wing loading mm -hmm. uh, was because it had hydraulic controls and this had cable controls. Yeah. And they just they just couldn't reverse direction as fast as the Sabre could. Yeah, there could be it. I, mm -hmm. I, but everything I've read, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not an expert in all this stuff, but was the MiG-15 was quite formidable. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of good documentaries from the uh, Russian perspective that uh, really uh, highlight uh, how effective the Russians were able to be mm -hmm. with uh, yeah, the MiG-15. Ours is a little unique, as you can see, there's kind of a bit of a mess down here right now, but uh, we're actually putting on T-33 uh, brakes. Oh, that was mentioned. I think you mentioned it when we were looking at it. Yeah. Uh, um, back in, in whenever it was. Yeah, it's been going on for about a year now, so mm -hmm. it was probably in the process. But yeah, so what they've done is... Um, Basically, Navajo brakes up here to activate the piston down here mm -hmm. to the 333, T33 uh, uh, hydraulic brakes system. And then it's all wet all the way down here. And then they fabricated a T33 axle 
Oh, yes. And you get the disc brake and a caliper over here. And a full T33 wheel. So it's, uh, it's going to be, I think it's, it's going to be the only one in the world doing this. They've been working on it, doing crazy engineering math. And, and it so still fits the, the well? And yeah, so the, there was only a, it's the same size of wheel, which is what led them to do it. Mm. Uh, and also, of course, we have two T33s, so we have lots of brake parts are easy to get. Uh, so the, 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 big, the main problem was with the, the old drum brakes, they're all air activated. So you got the little handlebar in here mm -hmm. to uh, kind of mm -hmm. stop it. And the, the, the Soviets had nice big long runways, so this thing's not landing on that short of runways. Or not long, I should say. So uh, the brake drums overheat really easy to crack, and then you can't get replacements. So that's part of the reason why they wanted to do it. Uh, also, just be more effective braking and much safer. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, and is it steer with its brakes? Yes, it's like a T33. It's a full caster nose wheel. Yeah. At least that's my understanding of it. Not that I'm, I'm not an A15 pilot, so. <laughs> I have to talk to our uh, Richard on the 15th on it. But um, it's getting close to being mm -hmm. complete. Be great. They've done some low speed taxi tests. High speed will be next. And, mm -hmm. then, uh, and then she'll be back. So you'll be giving rides, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah we have a couple booked this year. Hopefully, if everything goes good, uh, she'll be up and giving some rides. It'll be, uh, it'll be pretty exciting. I can't wait. And she's loud. It'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even just at idle, it's just amazing to hear it. Yeah. So it's it's the original Soviet engine in, in, yes. in this one. Yes, I think it's KV one, which is just a copy of the British Rolls Royce engine that the Brits were so kind mm -hmm. to sell the Soviets to <laughs> try and uh, foster good relations. Yeah, and then of course, it's probably the first time you've seen this one since we uh, redid it. Yeah, it looks really sweet. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Now, did you uh, when you, were, you must have been doing your training, etc. You must have seen uh, vampires. Did you ever interact with them at all? Never interacted with them. My memory of the vampire is watching them perform at the CNA. Okay, well, that's I a good was memory. I down to the CNA every year for the air show. Okay. Because, yeah, they were the first air demonstration team, were they not? I I think you might be right. I can't remember what they're called, the Blue Devils or something. Yeah. I have to look it up. I'm, I'm, my memory's hazy. I'm getting a nod from John, so I think I'm right. All right, good. Blue Devils, yeah. Well, ours is, this is not uh, authentic RCF. Uh, the airplane because the rcf did not have the t-55 the two-seater so this all right so this was actually built for the swiss air force and then uh brought to the united states when it was um, decommissioned and then eventually to canada about 10 years ago uh although obviously we're we cleaned out as an homage to the rcf mm -hmm. um, and then of course the the color the uh the the uh face her face is uh is a recreation of um uh, design that was on a 442 squadron out on um, the west coast. Oh, and uh, what they did, uh, we don't, we haven't really fully tried to the First Nations. Exactly, it was actually uh, they were used. They used a lot of Haida designs, and there's multiple very uh, different of a design for the face. This is one of them, um, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of different designs, and uh, it was you know it was also an homage to the uh, to the Haidas on the west coast. So uh, you know, we thought it was a cool story behind it and definitely looks cool, gets a lot of attention and, uh, and it's historically accurate, at least mm -hmm. as historically accurate as we can make it. Uh, so uh, yeah, we just finished it two months ago and it's been, uh, it's been quite a hit. Is that um, a hard rubber top? Yeah, it's, uh, that's actually the exact same nose wheel. It's actually the exact same as a tail wheel off of Dow Mosquito. Yeah, I should show you some pictures. We had everything stripped because this is all wood, of course, right? Yes. And uh, you can see the grain and stuff to the roof, but uh, it was quite the process tearing all this off. And we had one of our, a couple of our guys here, John and myself and Doug, uh, stripping everything off, all the old uh, linen and then sanding everything down and re, re uh, putting it out. It's a Seekonite fabric on it, so you can see all the seams and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it was quite the process. It took about eight months. But, uh, she flies great. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've gone for a couple flights in her.